name is Patrick Gargano. I'm a content developer with uh, technical education uh, in learning and certifications. In case you're wondering what the heck a content developer is, we basically build the official Cisco courses. So if you take CCNA, Encore, NRC, ENSLD, so we take care of uh, the enterprise track specifically, um, DevNet as well, so DevNet Associate, DevNet Core, and also the service provider track. So we have a pretty big team, but we have a lot of courses that we, we build and manage and, and update. So when new blueprints come out, we update courses for that. We also have other courses that aren't certification related. They're technology related instead, specifically. So stuff like uh, DNA Center courses. So basically my team, we build that, that content, that, that official um, Cisco content. I just want to talk about two things this morning with you. First thing is some SD-WAN. We'll see if uh, I can convert you all to SD-WAN in about 15 minutes. And then the second thing I want to talk about is the SD-WAN content that's going to be specifically hosted in our new platform, Cisco U. So first question about Cisco U is hopefully you've heard about it. Yes, raise your hand. Yeah. Hopefully maybe you've signed up for early access. So what I'm excited to share with you today is some of the content that's about to be pushed to the Cisco U platform very, very, very shortly. So um, this is like I'm pulling back the curtain and you'll see what's going on. That's, that's really all I want to do. Then I want to give away a bunch of stuff. Um, I'm from Canada, an area in Canada called Quebec, and we make one thing really, really well, which is maple syrup. Now, I didn't bring cans of maple syrup because I couldn't have, they wouldn't have allowed me to out, of, out of Canada with cans. So what I did is I brought a lot of um, pure maple syrup candy instead. So we're going to do a little Q&A towards the end, and it's going to be quick fire, you know, short answer stuff. You get the right answer, or you're close enough, or you're friendly, or at least you tried. I'm going to give you a candy because I brought about a kilo, and I don't want to bring it back to Canada. So just keep, and you can answer multiple times. I'll just keep throwing candy at you. Um, and then I brought one of my books that I published with Cisco Press. So we'll do a giveaway of that as well as the, so as you can see, I'm giving away more stuff than I'm actually talking about. So we're going to give away loads of stuff. All right. Why would you care about SD-WAN? So if you're looking at your networks today, you've got loads of challenges in terms of that network. Um, I'm just going to kind of focus around my little hexagon of challenges down here. So. We've got maybe some bandwidth limitation issues. Our MPLS links are getting saturated. They're getting more and more expensive. They take a long time to provision as well sometimes. Got loads of security challenges now as well as maybe we're asking our branch offices to connect directly to the internet. So we're exposing them to a lot of threats. So we need to make sure that we're securing them as much as possible while also securing our data centers and our cloud access. Um, we're doing a lot more with this as well. So we've got users that are doing WebEx and voice and SAP and all kinds of other applications. And we, we don't get a sense of what that application is maybe as it's traveling through the network. Maybe we're doing some, some NBAR or so, some deep packet inspection, but it'd be nice to actually say, okay, this traffic should go this way and that traffic should take another route instead. And we're doing a lot more of this as well, or more and more of it anyway. So, Workloads in the cloud, so Microsoft Azure, AWS, GCP. Maybe we're leveraging Office 365, who isn't? Dropbox, SAP. We need, we need some help with this. The cost, well, listen, the, the cost is not going to change, but the cost keeps going up. You're opening more branch offices. You're deploying more routers. You're, you're building out more links to those, those locations as well. So there's a high cost of, of, of maintenance as well. So these kind of go together, to be honest. So the operation side of things, as you kind of deploy all of those branch locations, and then kind of managing that. So at the end of the day, the one thing that kind of pops out to me on this slide is this here. I don't want that. I want a successful experience with my, um, with my staff. We're we getting too much. Am I like talking too loudly? Is this OK now? It's super annoying. I can even hear it myself, so sorry about that. Um, so this is maybe what traditionally the network would have looked like. I know it's really simplified, but just kind of bear with me. So we would have had data centers, HQ, all of our security would have been in there, all of our internet access would have been from there, and, and we would have branch offices connecting back historically, typically, MPLS links, maybe something else, but let's just go with the MPLS as an example. Expensive, takes a while to provision, bandwidth issues maybe, and obviously we had people who 
we're on the go. And I mean, I'm talking about pre-COVID here. So they're, they're using a VPN connection, maybe back to the office. They're, they're on the road, they're at a hotel, you know, whatever the case may be. So this was the, this, this is kind of what it looks like. And, and this is probably where you're headed. And that may be some bad news for you, but this is kind of where you're headed. So we still have the same locations. We still have that data center. Maybe we're opening more data centers. We've got our HQ, we've got our branch offices. We're opening more and more branch offices. And we got loads of people now that are at home, they're on the road, they're traveling. They need secure access back to maybe some workloads here, but notice what's going on with those arrows. They're not all doing this kind of like hairpin, right? Over here, everything was hitting the HQ or the, the data center. So it's like a, a bottleneck in a sense. Everything's kind of concentrated there. Here, this is getting a bit scarier. So we're, we're actually connecting straight out to those cloud applications I was mentioning earlier. Maybe we're connecting straight out to um, our SaaS stuff, our, our AAAS, or our GCP, Microsoft Azure, AWS. And again, we need that security. So we want this to still be secure, but this is definitely going to have to be secure if I'm allowing this to happen. Um, and, and obviously this as well. So this is where we're going. And obviously as the SD-WAN evangelist on the team, because within my content development team, I'm responsible for all the SD-WAN courses. I'd like to convince you of going in the SD-WAN direction. So I know there's a lot of stuff going on here, but I'm just going to kind of highlight what's, what's here. So at the end of the day, four things SD-WAN should deliver for you and your customers. You want to be able to connect anything. So it doesn't matter if it's a branch, a data center, people on the road, whatever the case may be, you want to have that connectivity to the cloud as well. This is a key one right here. I don't care how I'm connecting. Is it an internet connection? Is it an MPLS connection? Is it satellite? Is it cell? Or is it even more kind of exciting stuff, which I don't want to get into too much because I only have like 30 minutes this morning, but maybe I'm going through Megaport or Equinix for my connectivity as well. So it's all kind of exciting stuff that can happen with SD-WAN. I want any service. So what I mean here is, okay, accessing all those cloud apps maybe that are running. I want that security. I want some insight into what's going on in my network. I want to see where I'm having bottlenecks. And, and this is where maybe Thousand Eyes can be, can be leveraged with SD-WAN to give me that insight, especially if I start using a lot more internet connectivity. Obviously voice, WebEx, that kind of service. Um, and this is another interesting one. If, if you're moving towards SDA, SD access, got multi-domains happening, I want to have that interconnectivity between those domains, if possible. And then finally, I don't care how I want to deploy it. Maybe you want to deploy it on-prem. Maybe you want to deploy it in the cloud. So I want to be able to push the controllers where I want them to be for whatever reason, security reasons or management reasons. I want to be able to get that insight in the network. I also want to automate, right? A lot of you have been here like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, listening to some of my colleagues, the uh, automation evangelists, the programmability evangelists on the team. So I want to be able to do that as well. So pushing APIs to be able to program and automate my, my processes. Um, and as I said, it, it doesn't really matter how I'm going to deploy this. I want to be able to deploy it. Maybe at work, you want to build out a lab on-prem to play with the SD-WAN stuff. You can do that. I can show you how. Um, or you just want to push the controllers in the, in the cloud or get Cisco to do it for you as well. There's a bunch of different options with, uh, with SD-WAN. So I'm going to go through this one pretty quickly, but these are just little highlights that I kind of pulled out over, over the past few years working with SD-WAN of like the key things when someone says, what, what can I get out of SD-WAN? So there's a bunch of little features, and I might ask you questions later for Candy. So keep an eye on this slide. Um, little heads up, this icon, I know it looks a bit funny. That's the icon we use to represent an SD-WAN router. So we call it a WAN edge device. It's just a router, just a funny little icon, but that's, that's what that device is. And what I'm just mentioning here is that obviously we sell those as hardware platforms, right? You can go to the Cisco store and buy a router and it's an SD-WAN router. Um, or you can spin it up virtually. So most recently it would be the CAT 8KV. You can spin up on ESXi or in the cloud. Or for those of you that remember the CSR 1KV, or there's also a V-Edge Vitella device that you can spin up in the cloud. So there's a bunch of different ways, again, virtually or physically. Um, already mentioned this, the cloud or on-prem deployment or for, for management options, that's a possibility. This is a key one here. What I want to be able to do is buy a Cisco router, send it to you at that branch in Austria. You get someone who knows nothing about anything. They just get told, take this cable, plug it into this router, and just leave it alone. 
And as that device boots up, gets an IP address, resolves some DNS information, connects to your SD-WAN fabric, joins the fabric, authenticates securely, gets pushed a configuration, and it's done. That's the kind of stuff we're talking about. This is the one thing that kind of comes up again and again. When we talk about SD-WAN, software-defined WAN, it's the same thing for SD-Access. What we're doing is we're taking that traditional router and we're blowing it up. We're pulling the management out, we're pulling the control plane out, and we're pulling the data plane out. We're going to have that on the next slide in a second, but that's fundamentally the whole concept here. I want to centralize my management. I want to pull the control plane out to centralize that as well. I have a 1,000 routers. I don't need a 1,000 control planes. How many do I need? One. That's where all the routing, the intelligence is going to happen. I'm going to push that information down to my data forwarding devices, and that's going to simplify my, my, my control and my policies as well. This is so easy to do. When you spin up SD-WAN initially, out of the box, without you doing anything, it's going to create a full mesh connection between all of your WAN edge devices. So if you've got 10 branch offices, it's going to go full mesh with all 10. Maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want hub and spoke. Maybe you want partial mesh. Maybe you want point to point here and point to point here. A couple of clicks, build a policy, it's done. Mentioned that already, so I'm not going to repeat it. I want to be able to use kind of any kind of connectivity, especially that one, right? It's cheap. It's pretty fast these days as well. Um, and if I can layer on top some security and some SLA maybe and some, some like thousand eyes to make sure that the connection is good, then I can maybe leverage and get the most out of that. This is not new. We've been doing this for ages. VLANs, VRF, segmentation. This is still present in SD-WAN. We're just going to call it something else. We're going to call it a VPN. But between you and me, it's the same thing. It's just a, a terminology, all right? So when I'm going to say later a VPN, just think in your head, oh, OK, it's a VRF. It's its own little routing table. Um, it's isolated. It's segmented. It's secure in that sense. That's pretty cl clear here. We're going we're gonna to, as I said earlier, we're going to blow out that management and have that one place. We're going to call it vManage. I'm getting to that in a sec. And within that device, that's what we're going we're gonna to deploy all our configuration, single pane of glass. I mentioned this as well, so I'm kind of repeating myself. The idea that I want to see what kind of applications are running, and I want to make smart decisions in terms of how the routing is going to happen. I want my WebEx. It needs you know, 200 milliseconds. It needs. Uh, jitter, a specific latency, specific jitter, specific round trip time. So I need to, to, I need to be able to do that and control where that WebEx traffic is going, or maybe where that voice or where that data traffic is going. Obviously, I want security. So if I'm blowing out the control plane and the data plane, I still need to secure that, especially if my control plane is pushing critical configuration information down to the routers in terms of how to forward, I need to secure that, that conversation, right? So even though we've blown it all apart, management, control, and data, they need to be able to talk to themselves or each other securely. We're going to do that with DTLS tunnels. And then when the WAN edge devices are going to like, configure and, and, and connect with each branch device, it's going to be really straightforward. Nothing complicated. We're just leveraging IPsec. We're doing some funky things with the IPsec to simplify the, the, the key exchange and make sure that it's secure. But at the end of the day, it's, it's still IPsec. I mentioned this one already. We want all of that, more and more. More apps in the cloud, more workloads in the cloud. And what's cool with SD-WAN, I'm going to say cool a lot. I'm sorry. It's my enthusiasm for SD-WAN. What's cool with SD-WAN is the fact that I can spin up SD-WAN devices in GCP, in AWS, in Microsoft Azure, extend my fabric, or what we call my overlay, into that cloud, and just build it out that way as well. So that's, that's another option. Can't forget this. This is huge. This is so huge that I've built out an entire course just, actually, you know what? I've built out an entire course just with these two things in SD-WAN. So it's a three-day course, and it focuses just on that because it's such a big topic. And not just on-prem security. We're talking about also cloud security. So Umbrella, Zscaler, whatever the case may be, we're leveraging those things as well. Are you all still with me? We're good? How are we doing for time? I have no idea. OK, OK, OK. I'm going to speed it up a little. First diagram, it's gonna, I'm going to use this for the next four slides. So this is where I said we're going to blow things up a little bit. So here's how it looks. I know these, these icons, if you've never seen them, sorry, who's, who's learned or looked at or played a little bit with SD-WAN already? I'm like, OK, so a little bit of, con you guys are already converted. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see that. Anyway, so some funny looking icons. So very, very quickly, 
Um, we're going to take our network, as I said, we're going to blow it up. And I know it, it shows three planes here. Uh, it, we actually talk sometimes about four planes. But at the end of the day, it's, it, this is what it looks like. So we've got a couple of devices here, something called a vBond and something called a vManage. That's our management and orchestration point. So management is the vManage, and the orchestration point is vBond. Got a slide coming up in just a sec. Bear with me. The control plane is this funny looking icon. It's called a vSmart. That's going to be the brains of the operation. That's where all the routing, the control plane is happening. And down here, I know this looks a bit peculiar, but just imagine these are all your branch offices. These are all your data centers, your remote locations. They're all connected, WAN edge device to WAN edge device. And what are we doing? We're just leveraging IPsec here to establish that secure connectivity. So that's like a really high level overview of, of what that looks like. So again, I'm going to go through these ones quickly because I got a lot of stuff to give away. But basically, we've got our vBond. This device is, is just one critical job. It's like the gatekeeper, the gatekeeper. So it, it, it's going to authenticate a device. So when a WAN edge device spins up, it's going to want to join the fabric. So it's going to reach out and say, hey, Mr. Vibon, can I come in and, and play with you? And it's going to look at a list of, of authenticated or authorized devices. And the Vibon is going to open the door and say, yeah, you can come on in. And it's going to give it some information, obviously, on how to connect to vManage and vSmart. But it literally, its job is to de decide who's allowed into the fabric and who's not. So authentication and stuff like that. Other thing it does that's really neat as well is it helps detect if there's any NAT going on. So if there's if there's a, a WAN edge device hiding behind a NAT device and there's some private and public IP information there, the vBond will be able to detect that and share that out because we need both IPs to be able to build this down here. The control plane, as I said, it's, it's the brain of the operations. Um, a lot of people, as soon as they start looking at SD-WAN, they quickly realize that the vSmart device is very similar to a BGP route reflector. And what I mean by that is as this device learns of a, of a subnet or a VLAN or a VPN, it's going to advertise it to the controller up here, and the controller is going to share that out to the other devices so that they know how to reach that particular subnet. So that's why they call it you know, very similar to a, a BGP route reflector. Um, obviously, this is where all of our control plane policies are going to happen as well. So how do I decide uh, where packets are allowed to go, you know, my topology information, all that, that's going to happen at the control plane. This is where you're going to sit down and log into the GUI and start driving the whole SD-WAN operation. And I've got a couple of demos I'll, I'll show quickly. And folks, if I run out of time and you're like, this sounded really cool, please come and see me. We can sit down in the back and have a chat. I can plug into another monitor and we can continue, to, um, continue talking through that. But at the end of the day, this is where I'm just going to sit down with that GUI and I'm going to push out my configuration, my policies. I'm going to do my updates, you know, uh, updating the code, doing software updates, stuff like that. So I'm able to push that from this. And then finally, we've got our WAN edge devices. And I've been talking about them a lot. So these ones are doing the routing. They support pretty much all the stuff that you would hope they would support in terms of routing, in terms of um, layer two forwarding as well. And again, these can be either virtual or physical devices, depending what kind of environment you're spinning them up in. I'd really like to take a minute and do this, because this is, I think, a really neat animated slide. It's a simplified SD-WAN environment. So if you allow me, I'll just take a couple of minutes and run through this little walkthrough, because I think it's, it really illustrates the magic that's going on kind of behind the scenes. So a really simplified network, right? I, I don't, I'm not even showing you vManage here or vBond. I just focused on our controller. And we've got a couple of locations. So let's say we've got this device at one branch. We're going to call that one Site 10. And we've got another one over here. We're going to call this one Site 20. And notice they each have a system ID. It's like the router ID for OSPF, for BGP. So it's like its name. So over here, we've got a device called 10, 255, 255, 11. And over here, it's 21. What else are we seeing here? We can see that they both have a connection to internet transport and MPLS. And I just want to take a second and talk about this. So how does this device figure out how to get over here? Well, as they're going to come up, they're going to send a bit of information to vSmart. And that information is going to happen through DTLS tunnels. And in that tunnel, we're going to run a routing protocol called OMP, Overlay Management Protocol, really similar to BGP. And those first exchanges between this device and this device is going to be saying like, hi, uh, my name is 10, 255, 255, 21. And I can see that I can connect to two different transports. And so it's going to send messages to vSmart. And those messages are called TLOCs, transport locators. 
And all it is is next hop information. It's going to basically say, hey, I'm over here. And if anyone who want to reach me, if they want to talk to me, send me stuff, this is the address they need to reach out to. And I'm available over that transport and this transport. So this one's going to do that message. And this one's going to send that message as well. So this is like literally next hop information that you'd see maybe even BGP. So we call that a T-lock. And have you ever heard of uh, the terminology color, a color to, to define something within networking? So within SD-WAN, they call a color the transports, basically. It's just a name that you as the admin can give to the different transports that you have. So it's, it's nothing, like it doesn't change anything really, but it's just the names. So this one would have a color called MPLS. And guess what? This one would have a color called maybe biz or public internet. Once these two devices have had a chat with this one, this one had sent back information as well, right? So this one said, hi, my name is 11. But it also received a message to say, hey, there's another one called 21 over there. And you can get to 21 over this transport and this transport. So guess what happens at this point? There's a bit of a chat. There's some security stuff happening here, some exchange of, of, of keys. And we have IPsec tunnels that are built across between them. Don't forget, this is going to happen full mesh across all of your WAN Edge devices if you just let SD-WAN do its thing. Then those devices are going to start running BFD, bidirectional forwarding uh, detection, to just kind of keep an eye on that tunnel. Make sure that the tunnel is up. Make sure that the tunnel is, is well, is healthy, is OK. Um, and if ever a tunnel goes down, BFD will be able to report that quickly. And who are they going to tell? vSmart. And vSmart is going to announce that to everyone else. Then it starts getting interesting. So at this point, you're like, OK, this is a branch location. It's got a subnet. Fair enough. Maybe it's running OSPF, maybe EIGRP. Maybe it's just a static, static network. We're going to as associate or assign that subnet to, as I told you earlier, a VPN. It's just a VRF. And we're going to take that information, put it in an OMP packet. We're going to pitch that up to vSmart. And that one's going to do the same thing. So now these devices are realizing, and vSmart is going to advertise this out, that they're both Hey, look at that. We can both talk to each other in VPN1. So if I've got a device in here, should be able to ping a device down here. Quick question. Is the ping going to do this or this? Thank you. You've all got a candy. So these OMP updates are going to do a bunch of stuff. Very quickly, as I said, they're going to advertise subnets, advertise next hop information. We're going to exchange encryption keys within that update as well. So it's more than just like a BGP update. It's carrying a lot of stuff. And it's going to push policy information as well down to those devices. So OMP is carrying a lot of information. Guess what? I add another subnet, add another VPN or VLAN or VRF. Going to push that up to, to the vSmart again and another OMP update, share that out. That means this one should be able to ping this one. Would this one be able to ping this one by default? No. I can do some leaking. I could do some magic to allow that to happen. But by default, we got security there. <clears throat> How are we doing? <clears throat> How much time do I have left? <laughs> OK. This is, I'm super excited about this because this is the stuff that I do and my team does. We build content. And I build SD-WAN content. So I definitely want to give you a little heads up about this. So, those of you that listen to the Cisco U demo and talk to some Cisco U folks, you know that we're building things called learning paths. So I'm building a couple of SD-WAN learning paths right now. A decision I had to make, though, was how am I going to put these together so that folks can consume them and know which one they actually need? So I came up with two different styles of learning paths. I came up with one that I'm calling a technology learning path. And I came up with one that's called a certification learning path. And guess what the certification learning path helps you get ready for? Yes, yes, you get ready for that ENSDWI exam. So what's in both of these? So within a learning path, we're going to have tracks. So in this learning path, I've got three tracks. If you know nothing of SD-WAN, you could start here. We've got the first track, which is fundamentals. Then you're ready for the next stuff, the fun stuff. How to deploy security on-prem and in the cloud and how to push and, and get access to those, those cloud solutions, SaaS, IaaS, multi-cloud, whatever you want. So I'm going to do a little deep dive in this one in just a second. This one has five tracks. It's a much bigger course. Obviously, if you've looked at the ENSDWI exam blueprint, you know it's 
a good solid blueprint, warning, just, just, just between you and me, no one else. We're going to be sending out soon an update to that blueprint. You probably saw some information about that. So if you're getting ready for that exam, keep an eye out for the new uh, updated blueprint coming out. So this one has a few more tracks involved. So if I do a deep dive quickly within the technology one, I've got, as I said earlier, three tracks. This track is the fundamentals. This is the kind of content you'll see. Got five labs, already a bunch of videos, and this is probably the most exciting thing that I wanted to share. This course and this, this content is about to go live like next week or in a couple of weeks. We've just built an entirely new overlay, and a new SD-WAN network for that course. Um, it's running 20.9 code, so it's pretty recent. Um, and this is all running in our environment called VM Cloud. So I'm probably not going to have time to show you, but if so of you were interested to know more, come and see me and I'll, I'll demo it. But it takes about five, seven minutes to spin up an entire SD-WAN environment, and you're ready to go and start playing with it. These ones over here, this is our security and cloud tracks within that learning path. Again, loads of labs, loads of videos. This one's leveraging 20.7, and this one is running in dCloud. And what's super cool with this is I click a button, I count to five, and it's up and running, and I'm doing a lab. And the overlay is built, the devices are up, and you're ready to go. So none of the, I've got to wait 20 minutes for DNA Center. No, no, no. It's up now. So that's the technology one. I'll just build this out here because we're running out of time. This is the certification one. So these are the tracks. These are the courses within each one, number of labs and videos. And again, currently right now, it's also running in VM Cloud. So each lab takes maybe five, seven minutes to spin up. It's running 20.3 because I built this a couple of years ago when it was 20.3. But look at this. We've actually started designing new labs for this tr entire track. It's going to be running 20.10. And I'm hoping, I said mid-2023, but I'm hoping April, May, as well as building this on top of the new blueprint as soon as it comes out. So it'll be super fresh and really well aligned with the um, certification exam. Whew. How are we doing? OK. I've run out of time. Four minutes. OK. All right. <clears throat> I know I went through a lot of stuff. Hopefully, you can help me out. I don't want to go home with all this candy. All right. Now, I just want to warn you, this is pure Canadian maple syrup, hardened in candy. It's lovely as you drop it in a cup of coffee or just pop it in your mouth, and that just gives you a little pick-me-up. I was giving these out at my four-hour lab the other day, and you could just tell. As soon as someone would take one, they'd be like, oh, OK, here we go. Now off and running. All right, so listen. Um, Tell me something about SD-WAN. Just raise your hand. Tell me something about SD-WAN. Tell me about a feature that, you, that you've, you've clicked with. Tell me something about one of the devices. Explain some of the terminology. I didn't get into a lot of stuff, but maybe uh, some of you know a little bit about SD-WAN. You can tell someone the answer if you get feeling guilty. Um, and then I can give you out some candy. So who wants to have a go? Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. Short answers, OK? Next. Yes. V smart is the brain. There we go. Next. Let's go, folks. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Color for transports. Thank you very much. Come on, folks. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? <laughs> What are we talking about here? Ah. If only we had more time to talk. I would, I would um, convince you otherwise. I would say that we can scale out for redundancy, for high availability. So we can have more vSmarts. We can have a cluster of vManage as well. But good question. Thank you very much. Yep, plug and play. Yeah, we can do that for sure. I can t we can talk about it. Sorry? Single pane of glass for vManage. Yes? Yes, thank you. Yes, centralized manager. What device does that, though? vManage. Uh, I'm going back here. Yes. That's vSmart. Close enough. <laughs> Folks, 
Yes, come on, who wants the candy? I know it's early. Fulton, thank you. Yeah, good, you can do that. Yes, yes, it is the protocol. Gentlemen, IPsec tunnels, thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. How are we doing, guys? We... Oui, certainement. Je viens du Québec, donc on peut se parler en français. Qui d'autre? Anyone else? Please, I don't want to go home with this. My son is going to eat them all in one day. Yes, thank you. Here, have one as well. Yes? Thank you, yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so listen, I've got loads. So if you do want to just have a chat about this, if you got a more specific question, just come and see me. I'll have it all day with me back here. Um, I've got an exam later this afternoon, so I might be studying a little bit, but come and bother me. You want to know more about our courses, what's going on in Cisco U relating to SD-WAN specifically, I'm your guy. Um, happy to demo the labs. I had a bunch of labs demoed, uh, ready for me, on, uh, ready to demo on my laptop. So um, please feel free to come, come and see me, okay? Right. So first draw is for, right, okay. So in case this is your first talk this week, um, we've been giving away some cool prizes um, during each talk. Okay, what do we got here? 96. Oh, sorry, 960. <laughs> 960. Anyone have 960 going once? 960 going twice? 960. Congratulations. We have for you. You got it, Emma? Okay, the last draw before I let you go. So um, I would like to give this book to someone who would actually use it. So what I would appreciate, I'm going to ask a question. What I appreciate is raise your hand if you are currently preparing for Encore. Please raise your hand. Is anyone doing that right now? Okay. Can I get your tickets? All right. I'm going to do a draw just from them because there's no point in me giving you the book if you're not going to use it. Right. The whole idea is to give you a book to help you get ready for the exam. So who else? Please raise your hand and give me your ticket who's getting ready for Encore. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Anyone else? Encore. Getting ready for Encore. It doesn't have to be in the next 31 days. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Encore. Anyone else? Thank you. A lot of you. Well, best of luck to everyone. Anyone else? Encore. One more. Encore. Okay. All right. Here we go. Last draw. Can you pull something out of there? Thank you. 620. 620. Congratulations. There you go, mate. Thank you. Folks, thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. Thanks for um, being so attentive. It looked like everyone was awake, which was great. Again, I'm here all for the rest of the day, uh, except for my exam at about 4. And I'm here also tomorrow morning. If you haven't left, feel free to come and see me. We can talk about SD-WAN and stuff like that.